Well, good morning. Um, this is re, uh, particular session is being recorded and will be broadcast on moneyshow.com and will be available on their website as well as our website in a month. So I'm excited to see you here. I'm excited to see that there are a few people at the San Francisco Money Show that don't like to pay taxes. Uh, that's why you're here, because we're going to talk about tax-free. It's, it's a different sort of world that you're going to be entering into. It is the world of tax-free, not tax-deferred like the IRAs or the 401ks or the annuities. This is a tax-free world that we're going to be talking about. And I've entitled my topic and my book, which, by the way, all of you in attendance today will be able to receive a copy of this book it's $24.95 on Amazon, but you can get it from me here today for $10. We will also be, myself and Rick Durfee, who's in the back, be speaking a little bit later today, and we're going to be doing a symposium on estate planning and asset protection tomorrow uh, at 9 o'clock in the morning. Uh, Rick and I will be available for interviews uh, the rest of the day in Sweet Pacific J, so somewhere up, about four floors up, I believe, is what it is. So let's talk about the family bank strategy and, and what it is. How many of you have had the opportunity to see Ed Slot present on, uh, say, P PBS, on public broadcast? Um, he is recognized all over the country as the nation's leading expert in IRAs. And in 2014, he, was, he presented a, a program that I happened to tune into, and uh, found it very interesting. Now, first of all, Ed is very animated, a lot more than I am. Uh, those of you that have seen him know what I'm talking about. He gets pretty excited. And uh, he made this bold statement. He said, if I could show you a way your family could be guaranteed to inherit your estate value today, so the value of what it is today, and hey, they could inherit it tax-free, regardless of what mar happens to those investments due to market conditions in the future, regardless of interest rates, regardless of how much you spend, would you be interested? So if I could show you a way that you could give what you have to your family today without any loss, without any shrinkage of it, would you be interested? And then, of course, in his exuberant way, he goes, who wouldn't want that, right? Uh, that's Ed Slot. Well, I've added a little bit to his quote. If I could show you how to grow your safe money free from taxes, without any market risk, earning on average 5 to 8%, taking when you want tax-free distributions, would you be interested? And let me add Ed Slot's exuberance. Who wouldn't want that? Well, I got to thinking about this after Ed's broadcast, and I, I got to thinking about, well, what if I could create my own family bank? If I could just, you know, just think up something, create, be creative, be, uh, be a creative genius and create my own family bank. What qualities would I want in my family bank? So I, just, I came up with 17 qualities. The first quality, of course, that I would want in my family bank would be tax deferred growth. Because you know, as you're paying taxes along the way, as you're growing an asset, it's being whittled away and less productive. And so you're not able to compound as much as you're paying taxes along the way. So I want it to be tax deferred as it's growing. But then when I take the money out, I want it to be tax free. So I've got any gain, I want to be able to access it tax free. I want it also to be self-fulfilling. So let's just say in my family bank, I want to create a, a, an account of $2 million. Well, what if I die the day after I start my family bank? I wouldn't have had enough time to put in the $2 million. 
So I'd like my bank to be self-fulfilling so that the $2 million would be there so that I could pass that $2 million to my family. Even though I didn't have enough time to create the $2 million, I want to be able to do that. And if I'm under 65, I want to fund it. I want it to be funded for on my behalf if I became disabled. The fifth quality of my family bank would be steady, consistent, upside-only growth. Somewhere between 5 and 8%. I don't want to hit swing for the fences. No home runs. Just single after single. I want some consistency each and every year. I want to make sure that any gains that I have in my family bank, once they are attained, I want them to be locked in and never lost due to market downturns. Also in my family bank, I want to be able to access my money to borrow the money personally without any interest. Wouldn't that be nice? And without any payment schedule. And I would also like paying a loan back that I take out of my family bank optional. And I don't want it to affect my credit score. I want to be able to take out loans whenever I want to without any qualification or time delays, with no one telling me, no, you can't have it. So if I want to buy a car, I buy a car. If I want to buy a boat, I buy a boat. Make a down payment on a home, acquire real estate, pay for education for my children and my grandchildren to cover the medical and emergency expenses and even generate sizable retirement income for me and my family. I also want to be able to lend money to my family members at the preferred rates that I designate. Now, I could even lend money to my family members, to my kids, my grandkids, and my nieces and nephews without any interest if I decide to. But if I want to have them pay some interest, I'm the one that makes the determination of what it is, not the bank, not, not the other institution. I also want to be able to forgive those loans if I, if I decide to. I want my bank to be customer friendly with no debt collectors ever calling. I want to be able to transfer my bank to my spouse, to my children, my grandchildren, or my favorite charity without taxation on the gains that I've had in my family bank. And I want to do this without any expense of probate. I want it to be creditor proof so that if someone comes and sues me, they can't get at it. This is in my little bank, my little family bank. I don't want anybody, any creditors or predators to grab it. Now, IRAs require distributions, correct? It's 70 and a half. Well, I want my bank distribution to be determined by me, not by the government. I want to be able to take it out when I want, not somebody telling me when I have to take it out. And I also don't want them to tell me how much to take out. Because of an art required distribution, they tell you how much to take out, correct? Well, I also want it to be back, backed by some of the strongest financial institutions in the world, companies that are over 100 years old. I want it to carry my personal family name, so I want it to be called the Phillips family bank. And most importantly, I want my bank to be safe from scammers like Bernie Madoff and other Ponzi criminals. So those are my 17 qualities. I'm sure I could have figured out a few more, but 17, I was exhausted after 17. Now, my question is, if you could have a family bank like that, would you want that? Or let me ask another way. Who wouldn't want that? Who wouldn't want a family bank like that? Well, the secret is out. Every American, all Americans here, especially adult Americans that are, have some kind of means of support, can create their own family bank. So the question that you're asking yourself is, well, how in the world is it possible? How can I have all 17 of those qualities that David just introduced me to? Well. It all started about 250 years ago. And for the longest time, there were no regulations in reference to the family bank. 
But in 1913, something happened. We, Congress passed the 16th Amendment. Does anybody remember what that amendment is? That's the income tax amendment. Interesting enough, a lot of things were mentioned as being taxed. Banks, interest, interest from banks, from investment accounts, capital gains tax. A lot of those taxes were mentioned. But there was no tax mentioned about the family bank. In fact, the family bank was left off the list. Then, a couple sections of the Internal Revenue Code came out, section 101 and section 7702 of the code, and guess what? They actually stated that the family bank would be tax-free. It's actually part of the code. Well, this went on for a while, and finally, in 1984, Congress took another look, and they recodified the family bank. And then in 2006, with the Pension Protection Act, they added a couple of additional benefits to the family bank that were not on there before. One of them was that you could actually receive long-term care benefits from the family bank and have them come to you personally tax-free. That was in 2006. So what is the family bank? Well, folks, it's beautiful simple life insurance. That's what the family bank is. You may have heard it as been called the infinite banking or bank on yourself. The, the concept is 250 years old and it's tried and true. And there are ways in which you can create this family bank that are intelligent, that make a lot of sense. It's permanent life insurance, not term insurance. So. Before I see a mass exit from, uh, from our, my seminar today, bear with me. All 17 qualities that I told you about are in life insurance, all 17. And we call it the family bank. The stars have aligned. The time has come. So much so that Ed Slot has been quoted as stating in this PBS broadcast, the tax exemption for life insurance is the single biggest benefit of the tax code. Ed Slot says this. And what's Ed Slot's specialty? IRAs. He doesn't get any commissions. He's not an agent. He makes a bold statement like that. And then he says, life insurance is the only way to legally print money. Well, I wrote the family bank strategy book to basically take the lid off of this. There's a lot of mystic stuff going out there right now, and I really wanted to tell the complete story, the complete truth. And so I wrote this book to let you know, to let consumers know, to let Americans know the truth about the family bank and how it really works. But it all is centered around one basic characteristic of the family bank, and that is the preferential tax treatment. So, as I said at the beginning of this seminar today, you are fortunate to be here because today you're going to learn how to accumulate tax-free wealth, not tax-deferred wealth, tax-free wealth in preferential tax world. Well, this is called the, my, I call this my family bank schematic. This is the way it kind of boils down so you can understand how it actually works. So let's say I have a gentleman come to my, my office and says, David, I'm 65 years old and I want a million dollars worth of life insurance. I want this life insurance to go to my grandkids or I want it to go for college education uh, for my grandkids or I'd like this to use this million dollars to pay estate taxes or the taxes that are gonna be incurred on my IRA because you guys all know that IRA money is deferred tax, has been deferred from the taxes and someday somebody has to pay taxes when you take the IRA out. So if you don't pay the taxes and you pass it to your heirs, which 82% of all IRA money is passed to heirs, um, somebody is going to have to pay taxes someday. So maybe you're going to use this million dollars to pay the taxes. So you say to me, David, show me my options. Well, the first option is to buy term insurance. 
Term insurance is logical, it's a logical play. But what happens with term insurance? What happens with term insurance? Eventually it what? It ends, the term period ends. And if you haven't died within the term period, thank you very much, we appreciate you paying us, and get, it, get the heck out of here. Okay, term insurance is a temporary solution. So for a 20 year level term policy for a 65 year old for a million dollars in good health, it's $11,000 a year. So you get that? Well, there's another product that I use often in estate planning. It's called no lapse guarantee. It's just a basically, I like to re reference it as permanent term insurance. There's, it's very one dimensional. It has a life insurance benefit, but it doesn't have a term period. So it always is going to pay a life insurance benefit as long as you're paying the premium. And what's the premium for that benefit? $20,000. So for a million dollars, uh, I put in 20,000. That means that if I pay my premium of 20,000 and I die the next day, how much does my family get? And is it taxable? No, no because section 101 says it's tax free. So get, get this in your mind, it's tax free and you only put in $20,000. But that's a very one dimensional type policy where you only have a life insurance benefit. Well, you could actually now kind of create a family bank by doing what's called a target premium funded plan. And this is a little bit more in premium, $27,000 in premium, of which of that 27, nine of it is going into, I'm sorry, seven of it is going into the cost of the insurance for, a, for the million dollar policy. And the rest of it is going into a savings account. And what happens in the savings account? The interest in the savings account earns, the money in the savings account earns interest. And based on section 7702 of the code, that interest accumulates tax-free, not deferred, but tax-free. So it come, it, it's accumulating. So we have the life insurance benefit, we have the cash accumulation, and everything is compounding tax-free. Well, you could also do the whole life option on this, and it's a little bit more in premium, $31,000. Well, what if, though, I said, this is such a great idea. I really like the idea of accumulating wealth tax-free, and I want to put in a zillion dollars, and I'm 65 and I have a million dollar policy. You can't do that. The IRS says in 1984, there's some regulation, there's a limit. And I've learned that anytime the IRS limits something, it's usually a good deal, okay? Because they don't want you to, to take advantage of them. So you could put into it a max funded $89,000. So my 65 year old, instead of just putting in the 20,000, he could put in 89,000. Well, why would I do that? Why would I put in more than I have to? Because the interest earns and accumulates compounding tax free. That's why you do it. What can you do with the money? Well, you can do virtually anything with the money. You can use it for your education, for emergencies, for business opportunities, for uh, a down payment on a home to give to your grandkids. All of this money can go, it can be a family bank. So if you want to buy a car, you take the money out of the bank. And do you pay taxes on that when you take it out? No, because you take the money out through a loan process. And it's a cost-free loan process that you take it out. So you do, not only do you not pay any expense to take the loan, but you also don't have to repay it. Why not? Because the loan comes from the life insurance benefit. So let me give you an example. Let's say I have a million dollar policy and I take out a $100,000 loan for a yacht and I die the next day. How much does my family get? They get the yacht, because it was I bought it with cash, and they get $900,000 of life insurance because I have a loan against my policy. Well, 
then, and, I, and uh, we can individually talk to each of you about your personal situation and how the family bank can work for you. But let me just kind of give you a couple of examples here. So let's just look at the 65 year old again. In here, uh, if, we did, if he said to me, I want a million dollars, but I just want to do 10 deposits. I don't want to continue to make deposits, right? I just want 10 deposits. So I'm going to put into it 40,000 on the target. I'm going to put into it $40,000. And I'm immediately insured for a million dollars. But look at my cash value at the end of 10 years. It's 373,000. Now I was insured the entire time for a million dollars. But in 10 years, I've got $373,000 of tax-free cash built up. In 20 years, it's 531. But if I decided to stuff my policy or use this maximum, put the maximum amount in, I could put into it 89,000. That's this figure that we had before. But look at the cash value difference. It's actually three times the target, but the premium is just barely double. Isn't that interesting? The deposit is double, but my, my cash is three times. Now, when the life insurance and the cash value accounts become close to each other, there is a rule in the policies that, uh, that requires that the policies increase the face amount accordingly so that we don't create the taxable event. So we want to make sure that that is always in place. And the programs that we work with do that. So this is called a target. This is called stuffing. This is for a male. I've actually found that for those individuals that are really wanting to use this vehicle as a tax-free accumulation account and tax-free income account, that if they are married, it's actually better to do a joint policy, husband and wife together. Why would that be? Because the life insurance benefit on a joint policy doesn't pay until the surviving spouse passes away. So not on the first to go, it's on the surviving. So the cost of insurance is a lot lower. So if the cost of insurance is lower and you're putting in the same amount of money, $40,000, look at the cash accumulation. It's significantly more. In fact, I put in 43,000 over 10 years. It's, I put in 430,000, my cash uh, is 493,000. But look at the life insurance benefit. It starts out at $2 million. So it's $2 million instead of a million, $2 million to my family, tax free. But look at the stuffing. I put in 131,000 and my cash value is a, a million six. I mean, what can you do with a million dollars of tax free money? It's pretty impressive. Why would anybody do a Roth? No one would do it. No one, if they understood this, would do a Roth, ever do a Roth. Why? Because a Roth is worth what a Roth is worth, period. Here, you put in 43,000, it's worth $2 million. Day one, tax free. No one would do a Roth, no one. And Roth has risk. This has singles, five to 8%. Boom, every time at bat, boom, every time at bat. No home runs, no fences, but singles, five to 8%. Okay, well, let's talk now about the reality. Where do I come up with money then to fund my family bank? It sounds like a great idea. Where do I come up with the money? I want to fund this. I like this. This is great. I want tax free. Where do I come up with the money? Well, first of all, look at your idle money. The money that you might have in a CD or in an annuity or money that you might have in a money market account or even a brokerage account that has a lot of risk. Because what this does is this is going to take the risk off the table. There's no more risk. We're not going to take the risk. This is a risk-free situation. I'm not going to swing for the fences. I won't allow you to do that. It's just, this is a steady single after single. Another place that we find money is in your IRA. We talked about the Roth conversion, but there's money sitting in the IRA. Wouldn't it be nice if you could take that IRA and do a Roth-like conversion, but instead of you having to pay the taxes on the conversion the year after you take the money out, 
on April 15th, let's let somebody else pay the tax liability. Doesn't that make sense? Wouldn't that feel better? So I get to create my family bank, I get to create my family bank and have all of the virtues of the 17 qualities that I want, but I get to take it from my IRA and have somebody else pay the tax liability with no out-of-pocket cost to me. We call this concept the IRA reboot with the family bank strategy. And in fact, it's the tax-free ace that you have up your sleeve. How does it work? Well, let's say I have a million dollars in my IRA and I decide I'm going to do the IRA reboot and I'm gonna do a repositioning of it over a three to five year period of time. So I'm not gonna take it all out immediately. I can take, it's still gonna be in my IRA, but I'm gonna reposition it over a period of years. Why would I do that? Well, because I don't want to create a taxable event immediately. So what I do is I, I secure a very special kind of family bank strategy. It's a unique one. So you, it's not, you can't just go on, pick it off the street, it's not out there, but there's a few folks like myself that know where this program is. And you take your tax payments from the cash value from the policy. So what you do is, let's just assume your tax payment is $100,000 of that 333 that you took out in year one. When would the tax be due? Immediately? No, the year following the, the year following the extraction of the 333,000 from your IRA. Well, this special kind of policy has sufficient cash value in the policy at the end of the first year that you can borrow from the cash value account. With life insurance to borrow money, they credit, they charge you for to borrow, but they credit you for. So it's called a wash loan. And so you don't, don't pay any cost to that. And because you take it out as a loan, using your cash value as collateral for the loan, and you take the loan from the insurance company, is it reportable on a 1099? No, it's a loan. You're borrowing money from the insurance company using your money as collateral. It is a non-1099 event. And therefore, you use that cash value to pay the taxes in year two, year three, and year four. And therefore, now you have a fully tax-free family bank strategy. Here are the advantages. You get to reduce the effective tax consequence while you're doing it. So you, there's, it, it's less tax on your Social Security. You don't have to pay the 3.5 tax. It's tax-free wealth transfer because I'm taking this IRA that I normally would have passed to my beneficiaries and I'm going to create a tax-free transfer. This is going to secure a large life insurance policy for my family that's going to be tax-free, which increases my estate. And I also then have, can create tax-free income for the rest of my life. You need to see this. This IRA reboot is an amazing strategy. And what I suggest to each of you is on your handout, uh, put down that you, on, on the evaluation form that each of you should have, there's a evaluation form. If you'll turn that evaluation form in, you not only get a copy of my book, The Family Bank Strategy for $10, you'll also be able to uh, get some specific information about the IRA reboot and how it would work for you if this is something that you have, if you have money in your IRA. And we will prepare one for you. Okay, well let's talk about required distributions from IRAs. I keep picking on IRAs as a source of funds, but that's where a lot of the money is. So, what happens at 70 and a half? What happens? We have to take money out of our IRA. Again, that's not one of the qualities of the family bank, because the family bank, you don't ever have to take money out of it. It's up to you if you want to. But with an IRA, you have to take money out. And in fact, in, in, when you're 70 and a half, the factor is 27.4, which is roughly 4%. That's how much you have to take out. 
Well, what if I don't want to take out my RMD? What if I don't need the money to live on? What if it's just a pain? What if it's a burden? And that's, you know, I mean, that's the way it is for a lot of folks. So the first option that you have is to spend it. But if you spend it, it's gone forever. The next is to invest it. But it's only worth what it is worth when you invest it. And it can be at risk. Why don't you give it to a charity? We can give up to $100,000 to a charity. Why don't you just give it to a charity? Because you disinherited your family forever. But why don't I just give it to my kids outright? I get $14,000 a year I can give to my kids my, and, tw and my wife $14,000, $28,000 for each kid. Why don't I just give it to my kids straight up or my grandkids? A gifted dollar is only worth a dollar. It can't be controlled and if it is spent by your kids or grandkids, it has no earning power. You basically use the seed. You, ate, you had the kids eat the seed instead of letting the seed grow. Well, I recommend that you do what's called the IRA Required Minimum Distribution Leverage Strategy. And I have a, a, a book, a booklet on this. If you'd like to get this, I actually have some of them here and you can pick this up today from me by turning in your evaluation form. So in this case, I have George and Sarah. And they're both 71 years old, and this is their first RMD. This is 27,000 is their net RMD at the end of the year. And they take that RMD, and they have a couple of options. They could put it in a Roth, but what's, what's going to be worth at the end of the first year? 29,000, right? Because they earned a little bit of interest in it. They could do the wealth creation plan, which is that permanent term policy that I talked about. It creates a uh, 1.5 million, or they could do the family bank strategy. So they could take this $27,000, where is it, right there, $27,000 and put it in, and immediately they'd be insured for $1.4 million. Immediately. So if they passed away the next day, the kids would get $1.4 million tax-free. How much did they put in? $27,000. So, and you can see in 10 years, your Roth would be worth 350. This is your Roth would be earning 6.91% uh, with a 1% investment fee. So you'd have to earn that every year. You couldn't ever have any bad years. You could never lose any money. So it had to probably be an indexed annuity or something like that because you could never lose any money here. But it would be worth 353,000 if you earned steady every year. In 20 years, it'd be worth 998,000 dollars. But my, my, but my family bank strategy was always worth more than the, than the straight up Roth would be. Okay, so what is that? Well, in 10 years, the return on investment is 11.86%. Don't know that you could find that anywhere consistently year after year without any risk. I just don't think it exists. Okay, and yet you can't find that in the uh, family bank strategy. So with the RMD leverage strategy, you supercharge your gift, you guarantee your future gift to your family. It's complete, completely controlled by you and it's a totally tax-free inheritance. But let's talk about the accumulation account because they could say, well, sure, the life insurance is always gonna win because it has the big, huge life insurance benefit. What about the investment account? Well, again, if I earned 6.92 in my uh, Roth with a 1% investment fee, so I would end up uh, 5.92, uh, and I compared that to earning 5.92 in my family bank strategy, which, by the way, I can show you the probability of doing that is 100% probable. Uh, you would, at the end of 10 years, have $301,000 in the family bank, so your Roth would actually be better. But what happens if you died? How much is a Roth worth? A Roth is only worth what a Roth is worth. This is worth $1.4 million, tax-free. Hello. In 20 years, 
Of course, the Roth now is compounded to a million dollars. Family Bank is still behind, but it still is worth $1.4 million. So what is, which is, what is worth more? And I have the ability, it's the same in both accounts, to access the money tax-free. A Roth is money is accessible tax-free, but so is the family bank. And there's no risk in the family bank, and there, this is laden with risk. To get $998,000 at 7% a year, you've got to put your neck on the line. You gotta take some risk. Okay. So in summary, with the RMD leverage strategy, again, I have this special report that you can pick up for, for, for free today by filling out your evaluation form. Just tell me how I did here today. Um, the R&D leverage strategy creates an immediate and perpetual life insurance benefit that guarantees no matter how the markets perform, no matter what happens to the economy, no matter how much you spend of your IRA money, your family will receive a totally tax-free inheritance. Well, Ed Slot, again, the guru of IRAs, what does he say about this exact strategy that I just said? What do you think he says? By leveraging your taxable retirement assets into a tax-free life insurance policy, you have the ability to turn a highly taxed asset like your retirement account into many times its current value, drum roll, totally tax-free. And then he says, in his, in his excitable way. Do it now! Stuff as much money as you can into permanent life insurance to create a lifetime personal protection savings account. I call it the family bank strategy. Now let's, the nuts and bolts of it. What am I really talking about here? Sure, it's nice to be selfish, to be creating a tax-free world for myself, a tax-free account that I can access to buy the Mercedes, to buy the car, the, the, the boat, to use as a down payment on a home, to give to my grandkids tax-free to, uh, for, for college education. I don't need to do any 529 plans if I understand the family bank correctly, because I, I would fund their education through the family bank. But what am I really talking about here? I'm talking about the next generations. If you want to create a future of powerful, productive posterity, you do it through the family bank because you control it and you don't have to pay taxes along the way. That's what it's all about. Now these are four of my beautiful grandchildren, all sisters. They actually have another one that was added since then. She's just as cute as these, and she's a girl. But the good news is, and that, this is not bad news, this is good news, believe me, but good news is my youngest daughter, Kelsey, is gonna have a baby probably any moment now. So she is nine plus, she, her due date was yesterday. So, and I'm here in San Francisco, uh, well, anyway. Uh, I enjoyed speaking today and sharing this idea with you. Fill out the evaluation form, turn it in to myself or to Rick in the back. Rick, stand, would you stand up? Rick, you're speaking today at what time? 11.45, 11.45, uh, not in this room, in another room, and Rick will be talking about some estate planning strategies. And then tomorrow, Rick and I will be doing a symposium, as you can see in the handout there. And uh, you can hand in your evaluation. Steve, well, Stan, Steve, thank you so much for helping today. Steve's a client of mine, and he said, I'll help. Uh, we, had met, we had Middle Eastern food last night, and I'm still alive. Uh, and hand in the form to Steve, too. Steve, you don't have any of these books, though, so if you want, if you want one of the, the IRA uh, strategy book, come up and see me. And then if you want the family bank book, uh, it's $10 and you can either pick it up here or up at the Pacific J Suite. Rick and I will be up there. Um, I'll actually, I'll, I'll be going up there right after this for a while, and then um, we'll be back for Rick's talk, so.
Thank you so very much. We'll see you at Pacific J. If you want to talk about your specific situations, Pacific J Suite, uh, Rick and I will be up there the rest of the day. After, I'll be there right now, and then Rick will be there after his talk. So thank you very much.